In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can build your very own custom DIY fuse holder. The basic idea is to build a sandwich and use stainless steel hardware that you can pick up really anywhere to secure your fuse to your ring terminals. You have to keep in mind that the studs attached to the fuses are going to be hot. So you've got to cover the bottom of those bolts. And of course, you've got to have a way to bolt the bolt down. So to make that easier, this fuse holder has a hexagon shape cut into the base to secure that bolt. That shape is tricky to cut, so I'm going to use the laser for this project. So it's off to the computer to lay that out. This program here is called Lightburn. It's an all-purpose laser design program for pretty much any laser on the market. Market, it's fairly easy to use and you can go out and buy an inexpensive open frame laser for under 400 bucks so if you wanted to get into laser cutting something like this will be a great first project for an ANL fuse you need either a 5 16 of an inch bolt or an 8 millimeter bolt depending if you prefer freedom units or metric units a 5 16 inch bolt needs a half inch wrench so these hexagons here need to be a half an inch, you can go into Lightburn and you can dial in the sizes with precision. Lightburn's really handy for your layout because you can go in and you can go to these buttons up in the corner and you can fine tune the position of your cutouts. I'll drop a link to these Lightburn files down in the video description so you can save yourself some time if you wanna make this project for yourself. One thing I really like about a laser versus a CNC is the setup time. All you gotta do is put your material on the laser bed, frame the material and start cutting. The laser I'm using here came with a camera mounted in the case and that is a game changer you can use the camera to line up your cuts with the material then hit the go button and sit back and chill while the laser does the work I made several prototypes in the final version. I ended up cutting the base out of quarter inch acrylic and then the top and bottom plates out of eighth inch material. You need that bottom plate to keep the screws from touching something that might be conductive. But you could build the entire project out of a single piece of eighth inch acrylic. You just have one more sandwich layer to glue together. Assembly is straightforward. You just peel off the protective paper from just one side of each individual piece, then run the bolts through the holes. You can use those bolts as alignment tabs. Even though you'll be bolting everything together, I recommend you use some kind of adhesive. Here I'm using acrylic cement. This is the best way to bond acrylic to acrylic. You could probably get by with CA glue or epoxy. CA glue, that's just fancy talk for super glue. You can buy it anywhere. And after you've got the adhesive down, you can bolt it all together. Now's a good time to install the bottom plate. You need that bottom plate to cover up the bolts because they're gonna be connected to your power wire. I'm gonna skip the bottom plate for now because I've got something else in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and hit these things with some CA glue so they don't fall out if I happen to need to take the nuts off the bolts. It's probably a good idea to put some kind of cover on the top. That cover needs to be clear so you can actually see the fuses and that is a big problem because this laser can't cut clear acrylic. This is a diode laser. Sometimes that's called a blue blue light laser because it emits a blue light. That particular wavelength of light will pass right through clear material and blue material. That is the main drawback of these affordable desktop lasers. To get a laser that will cut clear acrylic, you've got to kick it up a notch and get a CO2 laser. Those tend to be A, more powerful and B, more expensive. And that's why I'm personally on the fence when it comes to these lasers. Don't get me wrong, you can still do a lot of cool stuff with a laser like this, but in car audio, we want clear acrylic so that we can see our our subwoofers and our amplifiers and light things up. So for car audio use, the inability to cut clear material is a critical failure. You should be looking for a machine that can cut pretty much anything. And that machine is a CNC. And I got a cool trick for you. It's this thing right here. This is a diamond drag bit. As the name implies, it's got a diamond tip. And it's not just a solid bit. There's a little spring inside. You can even turn a screw on the end and adjust the stiffness of that spring. You install that in the collet of your router or spindle just like any other quarter inch bit. Then turn off the router or spindle and you can etch any design that you can imagine. Probably not a good idea to use this for wood, but it works really well for soft metals and plastics.
When you're done etching, you switch out the bit to a regular cutter. You can cut out the holes and cut out the shape of the parts. But it's not all wine and roses. Cutting acrylic on a CNC is very tricky. If the material gets hot, you will melt instead of cut, and you'll end up with buildup on your bit, which will then cause friction against your acrylic and melt the acrylic even more. You could end up with a really big mess. It takes time to get it dialed in just right. For some reason, a single flute bit seems to cut plastics better. After some trial and error, the piece turned out awesome so now we've got a custom one-of-a-kind fuse holder i might as well install it in the truck i've already got fuses under the hood this is going to replace my existing setup that setup had the fuses mounted down in the engine bay beside the battery in a custom mount and it was working fine until it didn't i was doing some routine maintenance and checking connections to make sure everything was in working order and i realized that it was really hard to get to all the connections and really hard to see the fuses the way they were positioned in the engine bay so what i want to do now is mount them someplace where i can easily easily see them and easily replace them if I need to. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. We'll see how well it works. I do have to squeeze some really big wires in this space, so I want it to overhang just a little bit so that there's room for all those wires. So now I need to build a fuse holder holder for my fuse holder. I'm gonna make that out of ABS. I hate cutting ABS on the table saw. Like all plastics, it tends to be brittle and has a tendency to throw shrapnel back at me. So why not lay out a design on the computer and cut it with a laser? Because you can't cut ABS on a laser. Not only does it release toxic gas, the fumes are not good for the laser. Pretty much anything you cut with a laser is gonna release something toxic, so ventilation is important. So it's back over to the CNC, where in addition to cutting the shape, I'm gonna add some shallow notches on the places where I need to bend the plastic. That way I know where to bend the plastic and it'll be a little bit easier to bend. That's just a matter of adding some heat with a heat gun. And while I'm doing that, I wanna say thank you to all of my patrons with a great big shout out to $25 and up patrons, Jonathan, Taylor, Joaquin, JD America, Timothy, and Bo. Now I've got these two pieces that I've got to fix together and I'm realizing I should have ordered some ABS cement off of Amazon and I didn't and I need to get the project finished. So I grabbed some five minute epoxy that I happen to have on hand and we'll see how well that works at joining these two pieces together. I will be reinforcing it with some screws just to add a little extra strength. Make sure you wear gloves when you use this stuff. You don't want this stuff on your fingers. Trust me, it's not pleasant. Let's see if it fits. I'm happy with the fit. You may have noticed that the hood strut mount is right next to the battery. So I checked for clearance. Nothing interferes with the hood strut. So now I gotta find a way to mount the fuse holder to the fuse mount. I'm not sure the best way to do that. I've already got this epoxy on hand. So why not see if the epoxy can bond the acrylic to the ABS? I guess I'll find out. The packaging says it's five minute epoxy, but it takes a lot longer than five minutes. Just plan on leaving this for a few hours. Go do something else, make a sandwich. I don't know. many hours later. All right, let's get it wired up. For the connections, I'm starting with a flat washer and then putting the ring terminals that are connected to the wires on top of that flat washer and then the fuse. You don't want a washer between the fuse and the ring terminal. On top of that is another flat washer and then a lock nut before using a nut to bolt it all down. After that, the cover goes on. I noticed that as I started to tighten down the cover, the acrylic started to bend. So I'm gonna to need to swing by the hardware store to get some bolts to make kind of a sandwich, a, a bolt and then the acrylic and then a washer and then a bolt. If I just keep cranking down on this thing, I'm gonna break the acrylic cover. You don't wanna do that. Then I realized something. This entire mechanism is about three inches above the battery. It might be a good idea to make sure the hood's gonna close. Luckily, I've got a bunch of little cameras laying around, so I put this camera under the hood along with a light and just close the hood to see if it would fit. It's the moment of truth. If you wanna check out the previous setup that I pulled out of the truck, click this video right up here. I'm Justin, this is the DIY Audio Guy YouTube channel, and I will see you on the next adventure.